ओम भूर्भुव स्वह तत्सवितुरवरेण्यम भर्गो देवश्वीम धीयो यो न प्रचोदया ओं शांति 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 नमस्ते माई डियर फ्रेंड्स दिस इज वीडियो नंबर थर्टी थ्री ऑन विवेक चूड़ामणि ऑफ आदि शंकराचार्य दिस वीडियो स्टार्ट विद द टॉपिक फाइनल वर्ड्स ऑफ एडवाइस दिस वीडियो स्टार्ट विद वर्ष नंबर 521 the disciple has can't enough progress in the field of sadhana now he has been enlightened and reaching the final stage of self realization पेंजा नंबर 521 इति नतम लोक के सिस वर्यम समदीध्व आतम सुखम प्रभु तत्वम परमोदी हृदय से देशी केंद्र है पुंडरी द महावचय परम महात्मा सीइंग दैट द वर्दी स्टूडेंट हैज गेंड द ब्लिस ऑफ द आत्मा इज एनलाइटेंड and is prostrating the noble teacher being glad at heart again spoke these supreme words to the best of disciples who has realized his self and is standing before him in all humility with head bowed in gratitude to him who has quieted his mind completely and has awakened to the essence of the bliss of the self to him whose heart has become light and happy the teacher addressed the following words the guru now advises the disciple how a man of realization should work in the world and what his relationship with it should be stanza 522 brahm parte santi jagat dattu brahmayu tat sarvatah pashya adhyatam drishya prashant mansha sarvasau vastha vapi रूपादन्य दवे अक्षित किं भीत अक्षु सत्ता विद्य तद्रह्म विद सत किं परम बुद्धे विहार सपदम एन अनब्रोकन सीरीज ऑफ परसेप्स ऑफ ब्रह्मा इज दिस यूनिवर्स सो इन एवरी रेस्पेक्ट इट इज नथिंग बट ब्रह्मा in all conditions see this with the vision of illumination and a serene mind is it ever possible that he who has eyes can see anything other than forms of all around so to what is there to engage the intellect of a realized man save brahma this entire universe universe is brahma seen through the mind brahma experienced through thoughts and perceptions is the world of plurality see this atma with the inner or spiritual eye that is with a contemplative mind those who have a pair of eyes will they ever see anything other than forms those who have quiet minds will they ever see anything other than brahma 
nevertheless the man of realization has to go through the tragedies and comedies of life he cannot avoid them but in and through them he never loses sight of the idea that the objects emotions and thoughts are in reality nothing but brahma stanza number 523 kastam pra anand rasa anubhuti mirt sarj suneshu ramit vidwan chandre ma hav vadini dipmane chitrendu mala ko yutum ke ichhit which wise man would relinquish reveling in supreme bliss for the enjoyment of paltry things when the greatly enchanting moon is shining who would wish to gaze upon a painted moon which intelligent man living the supreme state of the bliss of parmatma would wish to revel in the empty things of the world the moon shedding its mellow light makes the four quarters of the earth cool and brings relief to one and all from the oppressive heat of the day leaving this aside who will desire to see a painted picture of the moon who would rather miss the beauty of the moon rising over the horizon to gaze upon the dead canvas of an arrested moment of reportedly beauty when the source of all happiness is within the bosom who will court the impermanent joy of objects the realized man having experienced the supreme state of infinite bliss will not throw even a backward glance upon sense objects stanza number 524 asat padarth anubhavain kinchin ne hrsti tripti ne cha dukh hani hi tad anand rasanu bhute तपतः सुखम तिष्ट सदा आत्म निष्ठया इन द परसेप्शन ऑफ ऑब्जेक्ट्स अनरियल देयर इज नाइदर द स्लाइटेस्ट कंटेनमेंट नॉर द सेसेशन ऑफ मिजरी देयरफॉर कंटेंट इन द रियलाइजेशन ऑफ द एसेंस ऑफ नॉन ड्यूअल ब्लिस रिमेन हैप्पी ever identified with the self sense demands give us sorrow in order to end this sorrow we run towards sense objects by courting the objects the desire to indulge in them multiplies this makes us run after sense objects again and again the world of objects emotions and thoughts is unreal and so the experience of objects never brings enduring satisfaction or contentment endless satisfaction can be gained only by the experience of the essence of the joy of the self atma nishtha alone can give us absolute contentment at this moment we are established in the not self anatma nishtha get established in the self atma nishtha and come to live this bliss stanza number 525 so mev sarvatha पश्यन मन्यमान है सौ मद्दयम सव आनंद अनुभुजान कालम ने महामते ओ नोबल वन 
beholding the self always contemplating upon the self which is non dual and enjoying the bliss of the self you should spend your time the teacher addresses the student as noble one because he has realized the truth sarvatha means sarvatra sarva bhavena sarva prakarena at all times in all circumstances at all places the guru advises the disciple to spend his life seeing in all beings at all times in all conditions the play of his own self and contemplating upon his non dual real nature when your sense organs feel the objects around may that perception be accompanied by a close understanding that all the objects are but different forms of the one self when the mind is withdrawn from the objects instead of being plagued by lust anger greed delusion passion and jealousy may it constantly reflect upon the non dual self enjoying the bliss of the self o noble one spend your time when you are extravert see the play of the self alone in the world maintain the thought that the world is nothing but brahma when you are introvert in the hushed silence of the mind may you constantly feel that the inner world is also brahma since thus there is nothing but brahma everywhere may you enjoy the bliss of your own self stanza number 526 akhand bodh atmani nirvikalpe nirvikalpanam vyomini pur par kalam tad anand maya atmana sada shanti hi pramete bhajsau maunam in the unbroken knowledge the absolute the atma dualistic conceptions are like castles in the air therefore attaining supreme peace live in silence identifying yourself with the non dual bliss absolute projecting the world upon brahma is like building castles in the air in the atma which is indivisible and non dual you see the pancha kosas the three bodies the eye and mind the world of objects all this is like imagining a city in the sky vyomani pura prakalpanam it has no existence at all renouncing this fancy and keeping the mind and the intellect quiet enjoy supreme peace let not your mind rush outside this is real monam let not your mind worry over the dead the unborn and the living <clears throat> they are all mere figments of the imagination and as fanciful as castles in the air stanza 527 तुष्णीम अवस्था परमोप शांति बुद्ध रे सत्कल्पा विकल्प हेतु ब्रह्म आत्मना ब्रह्म विदो महात्मनो यत्रा दवा आनंद सुखम निरंतरम द कॉज ऑफ ऑल फैंसीज द माइंड बिकम्स परफेक्टली सेरीन टू द सेज हु हैज नॉन ब्रह्मा इनडीड दिस इज द स्टेट ऑफ quiescens in which ever identified with brahma he constantly enjoys the non dual bliss absolute 
a brahmatam man is one whose atma has become one with brahma one who has found his identity with the self everywhere he is called brahma with and knower of brahma he has realized that he is divine and knows that the divinity in him is the divinity everywhere only he who has realized this truth can keep his mind quiet objects emotions and thoughts cause us to be agitated the cause for their projection and the consequent agitations is the mind it is the cause for the non existent imaginations and agitations asat kalpa vikalpa hetoh when the mind which always plays dirty tricks is quieted there is total peace when the mind which is responsible for the flights of fancy and chaotic emotions walks the path of sadhana and realizes the self it becomes completely quiet this quietude of the mind is not because of deep sleep or stupor but because of the experience of the objectless unbroken bliss advaya ananda sukham nirantram stanza number 528 nasti nirvasan manno atparam sukh kardutmam vigyata atam sabrupasya sab anand payani there is nothing more exhilarating than the quiescence which comes from being free of vasanas to him who has known his own nature and who drinks the bliss of the self the joy that we are familiar with is the joy arising from sense enjoyments this temporary quietude arising from the fulfillment of a desire is accompanied by intense agitation for the repetition of the sense fulfillment in order to relive relive the moment of happiness compared with the bliss of the self this ephemeral happiness is nothing but sorrow the bliss of the self is an unbroken experience arising out of desirelessness the state of desirelessness itself is supreme bliss nirvasana mona param sukham nasti he who has known the self and has drunk the essence of its bliss can never be satisfied with the happiness arising from sense indulgences stanza 529 gach asti annu pivi yano vasan thapi va yathe chaya vasve div anand atmaram sada munih whether going or staying sitting or lying down or in any other state the enlightened says whose soul pleasure is in the atma lives ever at ease a man of realization always lives in absolute freedom as he desires swachha he does nothing prompted by the distaste of others anya ichha anya includes everything which is the non self the b m i are also anya their demands are not prompted by the self they are prerichha he who lives as the self acts as the self and exist by savichha 
a wise man who ever revels in the self as the self is a man of steady reflection. Stanza 530. Ne des kala asan digyamadi laksha de apeksha parti bad virte sansi tatvushe mahatam nu vasti sab vedni ka niyama vad avastha. The sage who has perfect realization of truth and whose mind therefore encounters no obstruction, no more relies upon conditions of place, time, posture, direction, moral discipline, objects of meditation, etc. What formulate can there be for recognizing one's own self? When spiritual practices are undertaken, certain instructions are given to beginners according to the demands of the sadhak. In the initial stages, strict adherence to the instructions will help the sadhak in his spiritual progress. So long as a patient is suffering, medicines are prescribed. Once he regains his health, who can prescribe medicines for him and for what? The normal demands and the usual prescriptions are given here. Place Desa. The Lord is all pervading. He is present everywhere. But the sadhak in the beginning cannot think noble thoughts in all places. In order to create a divine atmosphere, it has been suggested that a clean place be set aside as the puja room. Going to the temple for congregational <coughs> prayers, etc. <coughs> are all to help the student. Time, Kala. The student is psychologically available for prayer only at certain times of the day, early in the morning or at dusk in the evening. The rest of the time he is generally extra what? So these two relatively quiet periods during the day are considered conductive to meditation, posture, asana. Physical posture greatly helps to maintain a particular pattern of thought during the initial stages. With the hands raised in an ardent attitude of prayer, you cannot have sensuous thoughts. Hence the scriptures prescribed a posture for meditation, a sitting position with legs folded, with a posture for meditation, a sitting position with legs folded, with vertebral column erect and hands placed lightly in the lap with fingers interlocked. Relaxed in this posture, you can maintain a chosen thought for a comparatively longer period of time. Direction Dick. In every religion, there are instructions regarding the direction to be faced while praying. Various reasons are given for the particular direction. If facing east in the morning, one is said to face the Lord's Son who will bestow his blessing upon the meditator. In the evening, facing north is advisable since the Himalayas, where the Mahatmas live, are to the north. In Islam, one is told to face the direction of Makkah. Association of ideas create an atmosphere of prayer in the bosom. All these regulations are to be observed by the sadhak <coughs> in the nebulous stages of his sadhana. Once truth is realized, they are of no consequence. The story goes, a great Mahatma went to Makkah on pilgrimage. After reaching the shrine, he felt tired and fell asleep. After some time, he was woken up rudely by a priest who shouted at him, 
kafir do you know that while sleeping you should not have your legs pointing towards the holy kaaba get up and turn around the mahatma replied brother why do you get angry for a simple thing like this you may turn my legs wherever you think the lord is not the priest turned the mahatma's legs in the opposite direction and was surprised to find that the kaaba too had turned with the feet of the master he tried another direction the kaaba too turned again verily the lord is enshrined everywhere in all directions <clears throat> There is no place where Mecca is not. All these prescriptions are to be followed only in the infancy of the sadhana. Similarly, yama, niyama, etc. all have to be strictly followed to start with. They help you to achieve the goal. Having reached the goal, they are not necessary. what rules can there be for one who has realized the self means are only to reach the goal in the goal there are no means wherever the man of perfection lives that becomes a pilgrim center for spiritual instruction and solace stanza 531 ghato amiti vigyatum niyam कोस्वंतपेक्षते बिना परमान सुष्ठुत्व यस्मी संति पदार्थ दी देर इज ए जार टू नो दिस व्हाट कंडीशन इज नेसेसरी सेव दैट द मींस ऑफ नॉलेज बी विदाउट एनी डिफेक्ट्स व्हिच अलोन एंश्योर्स ए कॉग्निशन ऑफ द ऑब्जेक्ट टू नो एन ऑब्जेक्ट व्हिच इज इन फ्रंट ऑफ यू यू नीड ए हेल्दी सेंस ऑर्गन विदाउट डिफेक्ट्स to know a form you need a healthy pair of eyes the instrument of knowledge is all that is required beyond this nothing else is necessary to make you understand a thing which is not within the range of your sense organs i will have to draw upon all kinds of information and proofs but with an object already in front of you what other proof is required of its existence stanza 532 ay atma nit siddh parmane sti bhasate ne desam napi va kalam ne shuddhim vape apekshate this atma which is an eternal truth manifest itself in the presence of the right means of knowledge it is dependent neither on place nor time nor outward purity even while making a negative statement of the awareness of the atma i do not know the atma is present how do you know that you do not know i just know this i which knows and also knows that it does not know is the i we are talking about it is because of this i that one is able to say i do not know to know it nothing more than a quiet mind is required if the means of knowledge are there there is no difficulty at all place time direction taking bath posture rules etc are not required at all for the ever present reality does not depend upon them in the least there are only the external advice to quieten the mind to know that i am what i am no special time or pose or occasion is necessary even if in pitch darkness somebody calls out to you are you there you do not say wait i cannot see let me bring a lamp absurd so to knowledge of your own self is independent of external aid stanza 533 
देव दत्तो हमी ते दिव ज्ञानम निरपेक्षम तद्व ब्रह्म विदो पश्य ब्रह्मा मिति वेदनम I am Devdatta. This knowledge is independent of conditioning. Similarly, the knower of Brahma realizes that he is Brahma. If somebody says, "I am Mr. So and So," will you ask him, "How do you know? What instrument did you employ this morning to know that you are really you?" Did you see yourself? No. Did you hear yourself? No. Did you taste yourself? No. Did you feel yourself? No. Did you think of yourself? No. Then how do you know you are you? My dear sir, to know myself, I do not need any instrument. I am me. To know a thing other than me. I need instruments. The subjective knowledge that I am so and so is independent of any intermediation. Just as intimately, then the knower of Brahma knows himself to be Brahma. Nobody need tell him this, nor does he need any instrument to interpret this knowledge. Stanza 534. भानु नेव जगत सर्वम भास्ते यस्सह तेजसा अनातम कमस्तुच्छम किम नम तस्या भावस्कम भास्कम व्हाट इंडीड कैन मैनिफेस्ट दैट हुज इन एफलजेंस लाइक द सन कॉजेस द एंटायर फेलेसियस अनरियल एंड अनइंपोर्टेंट यूनिवर्स टू अपीयर एट ऑल the objects of the world borrow the light of the sun and reflect it the universe of the oet and the equipments of the bmi all exist and shine forth borrowing their existence from the brilliance of consciousness for if consciousness does not function through the equipment that equipment is considered dead to know the sun no illuminator is necessary to know whether the sun has risen or not there is no need to light a ma- match to know consciousness you do not need an instrument it is an immediate knowledge stanza number 535 ved shastra puranani bhutani सकल अन्यपी वेदान अर्थवंती तो किन्नु विज्ञा तारम प्रकाश येत दैट बाय व्हिच ऑल वेदाज शास्त्राज एंड पुराणाज एंड ऑल अदर बीइंग्स आर एंडोड विद मीनिंग वेरीली व्हाट कैन इल्यूमिन दैट एटर्नल सब्जेक्ट all the great scriptural text are meaningful and purposeful only because of this great reality whatever was expounded by the mighty masters was because of this consciousness which is the theme of the scriptures all beings have existence if this existence is removed nothing exists the self is the material cause for all the objects that we see just as the waking mind is the material cause for the entire dream world infinite consciousness illumines this universe because of it everything exists what other illuminator is necessary to illumine this mighty truth which lends existence and life to every living creature therefore at the time of samadhi it is meaningless to discuss what is that because of which i am experiencing this infinite consciousness stanza number 536 ashvam jyoti nirantar shakti rat रातात्मा परमेय सकला अनुभूति यमेव विज्ञाय विमुक्त बंधो जयत यम ब्रह्म विद्युत 
Uttam. Here is the self-effulgent Atma of endless power beyond all conditioned knowledge, yet the direct experience of all. Freed from bondage, realizing this alone, the best among the knowers of Brahma lives his life of victory. The Atma is self-effulgent and is infinite power. The power of the universe is its capacity to produce, nourish and destroy. This capacity is because of the infinite, the omnipotent, indeed it is all-powerful. The Self is indefinable, a parmeya. That which is conditioned, finite, can be defined. Finite things are substances which have properties that can be defined. When a thing has no properties, it cannot be defined. It is not a substance. Therefore, it is eternal, immutable, infinite. Who can talk about that? It is beyond all definition, meaning beyond all conditioned knowledge. It is the universal experience of all living creatures. Hence, it is not a void. Everyone has consciousness, though it is within the experience of everybody. Nobody can describe it by realizing the infinite. One is liberated from all bondage. Therefore, one lives gloriously and victoriously. He is the best among the best, since he has realized that which exalts men and makes them rise above their imperfections. Stanza number 537. Ne no vishai pramodate. Ne sajjate napi virijjate chai. Svasti sada kredti nandati swim. Nirantar anand sen tripta hai. Neither grieved nor elated, neither attached nor adverse to sense objects, but content with the endless essence of bliss he sports and revels in the self. Never does the man of realization grieve, nor does he get grilled. Even when he comes in contact with sense objects, he does not get attached to them. Grief, Kheda, is the state of mind created by the absence of objects of one's liking. Ecstasy, Paramoda, is the state of mind where the objects are in one's possession unrestrictedly available for indulgence. He who has no likes and dislikes knows no grief nor elation. The man of realization is above likes and dislikes and knows fully the avancent joy of sense objects. He knows it to be short-lived and a forerunner of sorrow. He is unaffected by the presence or absence of objects. They do not produce any disturbance in him. We are so attached to them because we know no realm of greater happiness. The man of realization is detached from them because he sports and rebels in his own self. He is well balanced at all personality levels because he has drunk at the fountain of infinite, infinite joy and satisfaction which springs from within himself. Nandana and Krida are two words used to denote the expression of joy. When he rebels, Nandana, he needs nothing other than himself to entertain himself. He enjoys himself in himself by himself. This democratic joy is called Nanandana. 
transport krida is when he needs something other than himself to entertain himself a man of perfection coming in contact with the objects outside sports in the divine presence everywhere when he embraces objects it is not flesh embracing flesh but it is hugging the lord who is present everywhere when he withdraws himself in meditation he enjoys and revels within such an individual is always well content his contentment is born of the experience of the unbroken bliss of the self stanza number 538 aksudham dehivithyam vyaktva balah kridti vastuni tathai vidwan ramte nirmamo nirham sukhi forgetting his hunger and physical pains a child plays with toys in the same way the wise man is happy and revels without the ideas of i and mine without recognizing hunger and pain forgetting exhaustion and fatigue a child plays with the objects of his liking similarly the wise man revels forgetting his exhaustion and hunger at all levels of his personality without the ideas i and mine very happily he revels just like a child the analogy is very important here exhaustion and hunger are present in the child because of the joy of the play the child refuses to recognize them similarly in a man of perfection the i and mine are there but because he is constantly reveling in the bliss of the self he does not recognize them and his ahankara and mamta rest unnoticed whether you do not have a thing or have quite forgotten its existence it matters not for you are oblivious to it it is interesting to note the careful and masterly technique of sankara's poetry the words hunger and pain are balanced against the terms my and i in the second line the myness mamta creates hunger for more and more objects while iness is equated here with the endless pains one who has eliminated both the sense of iness and myness is one in whom there are no more hungers for sense objects nor egocentric pains such an individual alone is happy sukhi in the world stanza number 539 chinta shunne dene bhaksh mashanam panam shri dwarishu svatantriyen nirankusha sithiti bhi nidra samsane vane vastram shalan shoshan adi rahitam digvastu sayamahi sancharo nigam antvithosu vidyam krida pre brahmani without the anxiety and humiliation of begging men of perfection have their food and drink the waters of rivers they live free and independent sleeping without fear in crimi- cremation grounds or in forest their clothing is the quarters which need no washing or drying or some bark etc the earth is their bed and they roam in the avenues of vedanta while they revel in the supreme brahma food clothing and shelter are the basic needs of a human being the company he keeps and type of activity he delights 
in indicate his cultural evolution. These conditionings of the man of realization are described in this verse. The man who is awakened to the higher plane of consciousness lives in perfect independence in this world without worry, chinta, shunyam. No thought comes to his mind which will disturb and destroy him. Worry cannot reach him who refuses to worry. Without any sense of humiliation, adenium, he is ready to meet anybody at any time on any level without the least hesitation. Food obtained by begging, bhakasaya asanam, he eats whatever anybody gives him, drink river water, panam sati dwarisu, Rivers do not belong to anybody in particular. Anyone can drink as much water as he wants without any fear. Abhi, he is not afraid of anyone or of anything. Sleeping in a cremation ground or in a forest, Nidra Samsane Vane, he is perfectly at home in both places. It makes no difference to him where he sleeps. Vastram means cloth. It also means the bark of any tree. A man of realization wears any cloth. If cloth is not available, the bark of any tree suffices. The clothes which need no washing or drying. Kaslam Sosna Adi Rahitam. It is not drip dry, nor is it wash and wear. No bandbox is necessary. If no cloth is available, he clothes himself in the four quarters. Thus he lives totally independent of all external conditions, for he is least affected by them. Tenja 540 Viman Malambe Sri Rimeth Davan Katte Sesan Visya Anupsthanam Precha Bal Vadant Meveta Yo Vakt Lingo Anu Shakt Bahye He wears no insignia and is unattached to sense objects. He remains in this body without identifying with it and experiences sense objects as they come by the wish of others. The knower of Atma is like a child holding on to total non-identification with the body. The man of realization enjoys the entire range of objects Ordinarily, we are all identified with the body. The perfected man enjoys the world of objects without identification with his body. He never runs after them, but they come to him unasked by the desire or instrumentation of others. Para Icha. His relationship with objects is like that of a child. The child does not know how and when to take milk. If you give him an object to play with, he will play. If it falls from his hands, he does not know how to pick it up. Somebody has to do that and put it back into his hand. Like a child, a man of realization by the desire of others enjoys the objects around. With no outward mark, avekta lingam, he lives with no external symbols to set him apart from others. Yet he outshines all in a crowd by his mere presence. Stanza number 541 Digamro va piche sambro va tavg ambro va piche damrastha unmat vad va piche bal vad va pisach vad va piche vanyam 
sometimes wearing no clothes except the quarters sometimes with clothes sometimes wearing skins established in the ethereal plane of knowledge absolute he roams about in the world sometimes like one insane sometimes like a child and sometimes like a ghost irrespective of what he wears he always remains in an atmosphere of pure consciousness his behavior in the world is also indeterminable he may act like a drunk who sees not the world as it is a man of perfection sees in and through the varieties of objects of the world the common presence of the one reality and hence his attitude towards the world is peculiar when compared with our norms he may behave like a child yet without being childish a child never drags his past into the present nor does he live in the future anxieties of the past and worries of the future never affect him he just lives in the present but the child lives in ignorance while the man of perfection lives in his knowledge of the reality a man of realization may live like a ghost renouncing society he may live all alone in a dark cave if anyone happens to enter the cave he will suddenly come out and disappear behind the trees in the jungle everybody is afraid of a ghost but no ghost is known to have been afraid of anyone he thus moves about in the world unaffected by anything around stanza 542 kama anni niskam rupi संस्ते कचरो मुनि सव आत्म नेव सदा तुष्ट है स्वयं सव आत्म न सिद्धत है बीइंग ऑफ द नेचर ऑफ डिजायरलेसनेस द सेज एंजॉयज सेंस ऑब्जेक्ट्स बट लिव्स अलोन ही इज एवर सेटिस्फाइड विद हिज ओन सेल्फ एंड एग्जिस्ट एज एवरीथिंग एवरीवेयर a man of perfection also entertains desires but with a difference he entertains desirelessness desires from our standpoint he may be working with a goal a purpose but from his standpoint there is no desire prompted activity it is only we who superimpose upon him the desires for the work undertaken by him is done as sincerely exhaustively and completely as though prompted by desires all his actions are spontaneous he moves about alone with no companions though he lives in our midst we can never share his thoughts and emotions he is all alone in his unique experience ever reveling in the self as the self of the whole universe he entertains desires which are desireless this way of life he cannot share with a sense neither has he the vocabulary to explain nor we the wisdom to understand the plan of consciousness in which he revels stanza 543 kaucin mudho vidwan kaucid pi maharaj vibhay kaucid bhrant hai some kaucid jag char kalit hai kaucit patrit bhut hai kaucid mat hai kava vidti savrtevam प्रागे सतत परम आनंद सुखित है एवर एंजॉयिंग द ब्लिसफुल स्टेट ऑफ विजडम द रियलाइज्ड मैन लिव्स समटाइम्स ए फूल समटाइम्स ए सेज समटाइम्स विद रॉयल ग्रांडियर 
sometimes roaming, sometimes like a motionless python, sometimes with a benignant expression, sometimes respected, sometimes insulted and sometimes unknown. How will a man of perfection live in this world after his final realization? No rules can be laid down for his behavior. This verse tells us of some of the ways in which he lives. Sometimes he behaves like a fool, sometimes as a man with brilliant intellect. The same man who was a rank idiot yesterday may be a formidable intellectual today. Sometimes he lives in regal glories with royal dignity. At other times he may wander like a madman. All these outward judgments of him are from the standpoint of the world. At times he may be very quiet, lying down still like a python. The python is the biggest snake of the jungle which lies down quietly in one place sometimes for six months at a stretch. It never goes out of its way for food. If anything by chance passes its way, it just draws it in and eats it, as it goes without food. The man of perfection may behave in a similar manner. Sometimes if you go and ask him, Maharaj, have you taken your food? Nothing has come to me yet. Will you eat something? Why are you asking this question? How much do you want? whatever you can give. An elephant does not matter. A rat doesn't matter. This sort of asgaravirti he may adopt sometimes. Sometimes he may be available for honor and recognition. At other times people may call him a rascal or a devil. He may be insulted or even remain completely unknown to the world. Thus, a man of realization moves about always enjoying the supreme bliss of the infinite. He is so engrossed in the bliss of the supreme that others will have to remind him that he has a body. He gets reports about his body in the infinite. The body is indeed the minutest dust particle. Stanza 544 Nirdhanu api sada tushto appe sahayo mahabala nitte tripto bhe bujhan pasyam sadarshana Though without wealth he is ever satisfied, though without health he is very powerful, though he does not enjoy sense objects, he is eternally content and though without Extemplar, he has equal vision. A man of realization may have no wealth at all to call his own. Even then, he is ever content and happy, unlike worldly men who, with all their possessions, are yet generally found miserable. He has nobody to help him, he is all alone in the world, yet he is very powerful. He fears none and so nothing can threaten him. He is always content and so never indulges in sense enjoyments. He runs after the world of objects because we have the desire to enjoy them. He has none for he is ever content. Naturally, the passions and the consequent paintings of sensuous life are not for him the ever peaceful, the ever joyous Mahatma. Therefore, he is incomparable as Maha. Yet the man of realization in all circumstances is a man of equal vision. Samdarshi, in his wisdom, he is an extemplar. He is humble enough to maintain an equal vision for all. None is too low for him. Viewed with his eyes of wisdom, he recognizes all as his own self. 
स्टेंजा 545 अपि कुरवन कुरवान शो भोगता फल भोगे अपि शरीर अपे शरीर ये से परिच्छन अपि सर्वगह दो एक्टिंग ही इज इनएक्टिव दो ही एक्सपीरियंसेस द फ्रूट्स ऑफ पास्ट एक्शंस he is untouched by them though he has a body he is not identified with it and though limited he is omni present from our standpoint he is performing actions from his standpoint he is not doing anything the bmi are doing their work because of their prarabdha what can i do i am the witness of their activity in my presence they are all acting it is immaterial to me whether the matter wasters are acting or not the man of realization has the attitude though doing i am not the doer doing and enjoying are for the mind and the intellect to indulge in they are in me i am not in them though he has a body the man of realization is not the body though he is apparently a limited individual his identification is with the self in all stanza number 546 asi asriram sada sant mimam ब्रह्म विदम कवचित प्रिया प्रे नो स्प्रस्ता थैव चय शोभा शुभे दिस नोवर ऑफ ब्रह्मा लिव्स विदाउट द बॉडी आइडिया एंड नाइदर प्लेजर नॉर पेन नाइदर गुड नॉर इवल एवर टच हिम टू ए मैन ऑफ रियलाइजेशन द बॉडी कैनॉट गिव एनी जॉय और सोरो बिकॉज ही लिव्स विदाउट एनी पॉय poignant body consciousness he is not involved in the body experiences as we are conductive happenings around us give us happiness and unconductive happenings give us sorrow the perfected man having woken to the higher plane of consciousness is not affected by the happenings at the lower plane the subjective and objective environments at the lower plane of consciousness can never affect him who has awakened to a higher one he dwells ever steeped in brahmic consciousness stanza number 547 sathula di sambandh vato abhimanin sukham cha dukham cha subha subhe cha विद्वस बंदशय सदा आत्मनो मुने कुते शुभम वापे शुभम फलम वा ओनली ही हु हैज कनेक्शंस विद द ग्रॉस बॉडी एटसेट्रा एंड इज आइडेंटिफाइड विद देम इज अफेक्टेड बाय हैप्पीनेस एंड सोरो गुड एंड इवल हाउ कैन एनी गुड और इवल और देयर इफेक्ट्स अफेक्ट द सेज हु हैज severed his bondage and is identified with the reality this verse is an elaboration of the previous one in the previous verse we were told that no circumstances whether subjective or objective can affect the man of realization here it is explained why they do not affect him when you are attached to the body cross subtle and causal you contact the world outside and derive joys and sorrows from it those set of circumstances which give you joy are considered auspicious by you and those which give you sorrow in auspicious it may be otherwise for others if you are attached to the three bodies and also have the vanity i am the body you become the waker the dreamer and the deep sleeper in accordance with your when identification to enjoy the waking the dream or the deep sleep world all the experiences of the three worlds you put under two heads auspicious and in auspicious depending upon your feelings of joy and sorrow 
thus whenever there is identification it gives rise to the pft and the pft alone experiences joys and sorrows to the individual who has done sufficient reflection and as a result of his awakening to the higher plane of consciousness where he has realized the eternal self sadatma how can there be anything auspicious subha or in auspicious as subha as we label it to be from the standpoint of the self there are no environments at all after waking from the dream how can the conditionings of the dream affect the waker stanza number 548 tamsa grast vad anand grasto api ravi janai grast ityuchyate bhrantaya hav gyatva vastu lakshanam dasan which appears to be swallowed by radhu is not actually so people who know not the real nature of the sun in their delusion say that it has been swallowed an example from the solar eclipse is employed here from the observer's standpoint the sun is eclipsed those who say that the sun has been covered by darkness say so because of their lack of correct knowledge how can darkness cover the source of light to say so would be a contradiction in terms but we do see it happen even though we see the phenomenon we know that the darkness has never covered the sun which at all times is fully effulgent the illusion takes place because of an obstruction the moon coming between the observer and the sun in fact the moon can never throw its shadow upon the sun the shadow falls upon the observer even when the eclipse is total at that time very time the sun in its solar domain shines as brilliantly as ever stanza 549 ऑफ इट the knower of brahma is totally liberated from the bondages of the bmi foolish people consider him to embodied from his standpoint he is not the body just as from the sun sun's standpoint no shadow can ever fall upon it we have no knowledge of the self because of our mental agitations the shadow of the moon stanza number 550 ahin nirvalpani vayam mukt dehastu tishthati it sat tascha manyo nit kinchit pran vayuna the body of the liberated man remains like the slow of the snake here and there it is moved about by the force of prana the way it pleases when a serpent becomes old its skin is slowly slowed off at the time the serpent lies in a motionless condition it does not move about or eat anything when the skin dries up completely the snake moves out through the slow and becomes rejuvenated the slow left behind is exactly like the snake it is of the same pattern length and design but the snake has no connection with the slow whatever might happen to the slow it does not affect the snake it is its own slow yet it has no identification with it similarly is the relationship of the man of realization with his body having awakened to the higher plane of consciousness 
he leaves his identification with his body he has nothing to do with its destinies the body moves about as long as the prana functions through it he is not responsible for the merits and demerits acquired by the body by the grace of life and the dictates of prarabdha it moves up and down he does not care hoot whether the slow body is preserved or destroyed consecrated adored or insulted it matters not to him stanza number 551 स्रोतस्ते दारु यथा निम्नो अंत सथल दैवैनीयते देहो यथा कालो भुक्तिषु जस्ट एज ए पीस ऑफ वुड इज कैरिड बाय द करंट टू ए हायर ग्राउंड और लो ग्राउंड सो टू हिज बॉडी इज कैरिड बाय द मोमेंटम ऑफ इट्स पास्ट एक्शन टू देयर फ्रूट्स एज एंड वैन दे अपियर timber is carried by the water current as it floats down a river you may say that the timber is floating down fast or slow to the right or to the left in fact the wood does not move of its own accord it is being carried by the current it has no intention of going anywhere it is the current which determines the directions position speed and destiny of the timber it carries similarly the body of a man of perfection is led and guided by the general stream of life deva the direction of his actions are determined by the total vasanas which are the upadeshas of god the creator the controller of everything so his body moves in accordance with the time as the prarabdha karma manifest stanza 552 prarabd karm prikalpit vasna bhi sansar vacharati bhukti su mukt deha siddh hai svam vasti saksi vadatra tushni chakar se mul miu kalp vikalp shunne through the desires produced by prarabdha karma the man of perfection bereft of the body idea moves in the midst of sense enjoyments like one subject to transmigration he however lives unmoved in the body like a witness free from mental agitations like the pivot of a potter's wheel a liberated man also lives among us to sense objects like any other man in the world as long as the body is living it moves about in the same world the world is created by the sun total of practicing vasana the ordinary man gets involved in the activity of this world but not the man of perfection he is the one who has gained siddha that which was to be gained sadhya he has awakened to the higher plane of consciousness where he lives as the self in the body he lives as a witness the bmi function according to the unexhausted vasanas the vasanas to exhaust which he has taken the gross subtle and causal equipment in their midst the realized one identifies himself with the consciousness which is the witness of all their activities uninvolved he maintains the tosni bhava the quietude sankra true to his style gives an example here just as the pivot on which the potter's wheel rotates though all the movements of the wheel are conducted on the pivot the pointed base which is itself does not move at all the attitude of the man of perfection is of non involvement in all movements that may be taking place around him whatever be the shape and size of the pots made on the wheel the pivot of the wheel is unaffected the finished product may be round or crooked tall or short 
symmetrical or otherwise yet neither the nature nor the shape nor the use of the pot spun on that wheel have anything to do with the motionless pivot on which the wheel is continuously rotating similarly the man of perfection remains unaffected with all that happens to his body mind intellect ever established in the experience of the self in short he too has prarabdha but he is not involved in it i conclude this video at this stage next video number 34 will start with stanza number 553 thank you for watching this video namaskar my dear friends thank you